I am but a small bean who can't do intros for the life of her. But hi, yes, I love theater. And so here are some roles from plays this time that I would love to be cast as at some point. I have only ever been in straight plays twice in my life. All of my other theater experience so far has been in musical theater, but I would really, really like to do more plays in the future, so hopefully this video will be me manifesting that to happen sooner rather than later. <laughs> None of these are ranked, except for the last two being my top dream roles, but I did try and kind of categorize the rest of the roles a bit. And those categories are classic books that were turned into plays and then also one actually classic play, and then Shakespeare roles, and then roles from plays I haven't actually read yet but really want to because they sound really interesting. <laughs> and like I said at the very end, is my top two dream roles. So let's get into it. I hope you enjoy hearing me talk about theater for a bit, even though it'll be quite chaotic. <laughs> Up first we have classics, and the first role on this list from this category is Lizzie Bennet from Pride and Prejudice. Okay, so first off, I have this like long-held belief that if I were ever like up for casting for Pride and Prejudice, that no one would ever cast me as Lizzie because they'd sooner cast me as Lydia or Kitty or Charlotte Lucas, just like for typecasting reasons, than cast me as Lizzie. But like, I really want to play Lizzie. One reason, which is a stupid reason, but still a valid reason, is that I am the second oldest of like a group of girls. So I'm like, I get you, Lizzie. We're kind of on the same wavelength, but on a more applicable reason, which is also a stupid reason, but I think it's more valid, is I want to sass Mr. Darcy while doing a fun Regency dance with him, because, like, who wouldn't want to do that, you know? I honestly just love the comedy and satire that Jane Austen has going on during Pride and Prejudice, so to be able to be within that in a play would be really fun to mess around with. Next is someone who I've actually talked about before in my musical theater dream roles videos, and that is Joe March from Little Women. Like I've said before, my life and Joe March's life are pretty freakishly similar at some points, but like, they really are, because even like my relationships with my siblings and like my specific siblings mirror her relationships with her specific siblings, and so like, we're basically the same person and I'm basically Joe March reincarnated as an actual person. I know this story so well that I've burned like a bunch of the lines and even certain full scenes into my brain. So honestly, I probably have more lines memorized of this show than like any other show that I would get cast in. So like, memorizing lines would be a breeze this time. So like, cast me to not have to worry about me memorizing my lines because I already inherently know them and have said them in my sleep for years. <laughs> I really hope I do get cast as Joe March someday because I know that playing her will differ very much so from any other character I'll get cast as because of my like intimate knowledge of her and her story and how I'm so similar to her that like I really would like to have that experience of getting to play her under my belt and stuff compared to any of the other roles that I'll have in the future where it's like yeah that's fun and all and it'll like be a specific meaningful experience but like playing Joe March will be so different like miles different from any of those experiences so I really hope fingers crossed that I get cast as her someday because we are very very similar so yes I also just love Little Women to like an insane degree so like just the emotional enjoyment of getting to play through that story would be incredible the next role I want to play is Nick Carraway from The Great Gatsby. I've never seen a stage version of Great Gatsby and I know like it would have to differ a little bit from the book version so like I don't know what the stage versions change or anything but I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep Nick as a character being sort of like just like a passive observer but I think that would be really fun to play with where I just get to like observe in a corner Gatsby and Daisy and everyone else just like being themselves and then I just get to be like Help what's going on? Why am I here? Really? Why am I here? So that would be fun But also I'd wonder how they make Nick an unreliable narrator in the play I don't know if they do but that would be interesting to see how the play translates this probably could have gone in my category of plays I've never read, but like I've read the book so I actually know what happens and I understand the character pretty well so it doesn't go there. But I don't actually know what the play version of Great Gatsby is like, so. If you've read it before or you've seen The Great Gatsby as a play, explain to me how it's different from the book because I'd like to know. I alternatively could play Jordan Baker, but honestly she's probably too cool for me, so like 
Nick's available, so I'll take Nick. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, if you get to play Nick, that means you get to wear cool 20s male, like, suit stuff, and you get to go to, like, stage versions of Gatsby parties. So, like, what wouldn't you want? I also want to be able to explore his relationship with Gatsby, because I think that's just interesting in general, but also, like, interesting to see, like, how narratively it fits on a stage versus in the book. Because I have suspicions that, again, I have suspicions that the stage version is slightly different than the book version. Just for reasons that are spoilery, but you know. But like, yeah, I think their relationship is very, very interesting and I would really like to examine that as an actor. The last role in this category is Owen from Translations. I saw a recorded professional performance of this play last year and it was my first time like reading or seeing the play at all. And while I cannot do an Irish accent to save my life currently, I would still really, really like to play Owen because I think his character arc is like really interesting. <laughs> I like him a lot because he's not a wholly negative or positive force in the play and his relationships with all of the other characters are very interesting to watch especially as the play goes on. And yes this is also another instance of I want to play this character because I want to dress up like them on stage because Irish fashion apparently is something I want to wear. It's pretty good though. I mean look at that. You want to wear that? I want to wear that. We should all start wearing this. This is this is the new fashion. We're wearing this now. And on to the next category, which is Shakespearean roles. <laughs> the first role in this category is Viola from Twelfth Night. Of course I want to play a cross-dressing role. Thank you, Shakespeare, for enabling me. Yeah, that's it. That's literally the only reason. Other than, like, it's a funny show, and it would be fun to be in, especially considering, like, you can make Shakespeare basically anything. So, like, whether it's, like, the straight version of it, or it's just, like, done with a twist, I'd be down for both. So like, cast me, I guess. <laughs> the next role is Horatio from Hamlet. He is just a good friend side character, and I would love to play him because he's a soft boy who cares a lot. He is important in the show, but in a way that is strictly as a lesser slash supporting character, which is honestly something the other characters in this video and the characters in like all of my other Dream Rose videos are not. I like my leading ladies and my leading men, what can I say? And the last role in this category is Hamlet from Hamlet. I don't think I would do a good job playing Hamlet, but like, wouldn't it be great to get to play him? Like, you get to be tricky and dramatic. And honestly, that's like a blast to get to play with. <laughs> the first time I actually saw a production of Hamlet done, they didn't have one Hamlet, they had five Hamlets. So like, now my mind has been opened to all of the interpretations of Hamlet that are out there. And like, that means I can do literally whatever I want with my Hamlet, and technically, it could be valid. Honestly, I think with a good director, I would be able to play a decent Hamlet who's also, like, wholly unique to me. So if anybody is a director who's interested in doing a production of Hamlet with me playing Hamlet, call me. <laughs> but also, oof, that's a lot of lines to memorize, so maybe don't. <laughs> and the last real category is shows I don't actually know very well. I just heard about them and they sound kind of interesting. I would like to play any of the girls in The Wolves. It's about indoor soccer girls team warm-ups and the last time I played soccer, it was outdoors and I was 12, so I honestly don't know how well this would go, but I still want to be in the show. From what I can tell of my very limited knowledge of the show, it deals with like an ensemble cast that gets to have subtle character dynamics over the course of the show and like that's so much fun to play with and get to work with, so like cast me. Basically, what me wanting to do this show boils down to is I've never done an ensemble piece before and I really, really want to and I think this would be a fun one to do, so. The next play I've never read is Kodachrome, in which I think I would either want to play Suzanne or the librarian, but again, I've never read it, so I don't really know anything about these characters, but only time will tell. But honestly, I read a monologue online that I found that was given by one of those two characters, I believe, and I really liked it. And then I looked into the play and I was like, that seems like a cool play because it's about like love and nostalgia and saying goodbye and stuff in like a small town. So like, think like our town and almost Maine, but like not. I think it sounds pretty cool from what I found online, and I think it would be a fun play to be in. I just feel like this is a show that would make me cry, and like, I want to be in a show like that, because like, if I gotta cry, then you gotta cry too. So like, I'm gonna force you to cry, and then I'm just gonna stare at you from my stage perch, 
and be like, hello, I did this to you. Thank me. The next play on this list is actually another play by the person who wrote Kodachrome, and it's called Marion or The True Tale of Robin Hood. And I would like to play Marion slash Robin Hood, or honestly anybody else in this show, but like, Marion slash Robin Hood. That's, that's the girl from me. This show was designed to feed into my need to play guy roles, so like, why would I not want to be in this show? I've never read it before again, like I don't know what actually like the script looks like, so I might start reading it one day and be like, oh no, this isn't for me, but like, everything I know about it points towards this play was made for me, so. Fingers crossed it actually turns out to like, meet my expectations of it. <laughs> Also, like, when you're given the chance to play female Robin Hood, you take the chance and play female Robin Hood. I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't? The last role in this category is Eurydice from Eurydice. All I gotta say is I love Greek mythology and I love retellings, and like, I really don't know how this play deals with that, but I'm sure that Eurydice is a role that I would love to play. <laughs> Finally, we're in the last category, and that is my actual top two dream roles. The first of which being Inez from No Exit, which is my favorite play of, like, all time. <laughs> I learned about this play when I had to read it in class for my junior English class, and I fell in love with the role of Inez. So like, ever since then I've been dying to play her. <laughs> she is a self-assured character, which especially in the situation of an eternal room in Hotel Hell essentially, is interesting to play with. Again, I have just developed an intense emotional attachment to her. This show is basically the smallest an ensemble cast can be, but like, I would still class it as that. So like, that would be really fun to get to play in the smallest possible ensemble cast you can have. Three people. Because if it's two people, that's not an ensemble cast. <laughs> Her backstory is very interesting, and I think that analyzing how it would affect how she is in present day slash death would be very fun. This show also comes with the bonus challenge of being on stage for the entire time, so you get to have fun with the dynamics. You get to have fun with dynamics with the characters, but also with like, the spatial area, because you're on like a more limited like stage than probably most sets, unless someone did the set a lot bigger than I'm imagining it should be done, but like, if they do the set right, it'll be a little cramped, so like getting to play with like, the small space you're actually given would be a lot of fun, especially considering that you can't leave for like, more than an hour, so. I think that sounds like fun. Long story short, I love existentialism, so sign me up. And the very last role in this video is Iago from Othello. Yes, I know. Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> you wanna play what? Who? <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> this one I wanna play honestly because I'm pretty sure that my desire to play JD also bleeds into my desire to play Iago. He is a manipulative good guy, bad guy, and honestly, I just really want to play him, like, a lot. Especially after seeing Kenneth Branagh play him in the movie, like, that's peak Iago right there. And I just want to get a chance to get anywhere near that. <laughs> His role is really interesting because he's essentially, like, the protagonist main character of the play, even though, like, he's not, because that's technically Othello. I don't really know what he's considered to be, but I know that in my, like, English class when I actually had to read Othello, that, like, we talked about this in saying that, like, Iago basically, like, ends most, like, scenes slash, like, acts, I think. Instead of, like, anyone else, it's normally, like, and now everyone leaves the room and Iago does, like, a monologue thing to himself. Is that called a soliloquy? I haven't studied enough Shakespeare to remember these things. But, like, basically, Iago talks a whole lot in this show, and I want to play him because he's super cool. He's not. He's like a horrible person. <laughs> this is again the problem with talking about Iago or JT. They're both like, they're great people to play. They're not great people to be <laughs> as a real person. <laughs> I hope I make this distinction clear enough. I don't want to be Iago or JD. I just want to play them. Don't worry, I'm not going to go around doing any of the horrible things that either of those people do. <laughs> So yeah, that's all of my play dream roles. I'm aware that it was a mess, but I hope you enjoyed some part of the video anyway. I would be really interested to see your play dream roles, so if you have any, please put them in the comments. And if you've read any of the plays that I haven't read, I would really love to hear your thoughts on those. Anyway, this is the end of the video, and I hope you'll come back next week when I post something completely different. So, see you then. Bye!